Hey all, uh, welcome to Make More Bonsai. Today, for this session, let's talk about this Japanese black pine. This tree here is about 22 years old. How do I know that? Well, 22 years ago, I planted about 100 Japanese black pine seeds and this is one of them. I decided to plant it in the ground. Just wanted to put it in the ground to fatten the trunk. So right around 2015, uh, pulled it out of the ground, dug it up. So after reviewing the tree after a year getting established, I realized there was some one-sided branching and wanted to fix that. Big move was made where I turned the trunk into a branch and made a branch the new leader for the trunk and left that to grow for a couple of years so we could see here in 2016 and again in 2018 how that was coming along. Right around 2020 or so, Put it into a bonsai pot and let it establish itself in a bonsai pot for a year and here we are we're now 2022 20 years later we're ready to start really digging in and starting to develop this tree into a more refined bonsai tree the goal for this session is to set it up for winter and next spring where some real aggressive work is going to happen as we try to improve branch ramification and get some shorter needles over the next couple of years. So if we take a look at the structure of the tree, we can see we've got our initial first branch, we got a second branch, some back branching, and we also have a bit of an apex being developed, the apex being the top of the tree, but there's this weird long thing sticking out. That's gonna be a sacrifice branch. When uh, I bent this tree over to change the trunk into a branch, that branch that became the new leader still a little too thin for my taste. I would prefer that taper to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to, for the next year, maybe two, let that one sacrifice branch grow out wild and keep vascular activity flowing well past what I want the apex to be. And this is gonna energize and fatten that trunk. The ultimate goal for this tree uh, for the next couple of years is to really refine this informal upright style. You can see here I'm establishing a asymmetrical triangle within the foliage and that's going to be the basis of its design. We also need to develop the branches and we're going to be kind of setting up these branches to build into these asymmetrical smaller triangles within the design and clearing the way for that sacrifice branch to really get plenty of light and not interrupt the other development within the tree. Sounds exciting. Without further ado, let's get into it. One of the first things that one would do when one starts this kind of work in fall is to reacquaint yourself with the tree, spend a little time analyzing where the branches are. It's been a while, maybe six months. We're gonna reacquaint ourselves. Looking for ways I can clear a path for some wire because we're gonna apply some wire to this tree to spread the branches out. So when removing the needles, I really begin at the bottom part of the branch, removing those lower needles. This I mean, it improves the overall design of the tree and those needles are least efficient. They're at the bottom, they're getting the least amount of sun. So those are the first targets for removal. Going through, you can find ones where I'm clearing a path for the wire, which we'll apply a little bit later. I'm also clearing the way for that sacrifice branch and make sure that it is clear that this is a sacrifice branch because when you when you spend a little time with these trees you kind of edit out the stuff you know is going to go away <laughs> and that's going to be that sacrifice branch and it really helps for your visual identification as you go through i'm using copper wire on this japanese black pine you can use copper you can use aluminum i'm choosing copper because i think this wire is going to be on for more than a season or two when you bend copper wire, the structure of the molecules within the wire hardens and makes it more difficult to bend after you make those initial bends. And since I expect this wire to be on the tree for a while, anything that comes along that might brush against the branch won't really move it all that much, which is why I'm using the copper wire. While I'm wiring the tree, you can see I'm keeping two hands on the branch. One hand is guiding the wire to make contact with the branch. My other hand is moving the wire through and we are removing needles that would end up being held down by the wire. I'm also pulling needles that would end up being 
underneath that wire. We don't want to wire down any needles. Think of it like an injury. <laughs> Think of it as, you know, you're walking around with an open cut. So if you're wiring down groups of needles as you're wiring the tree, the tree is putting a lot of energy into healing those little injuries, keeping the energy going where it's supposed to be. It's better to remove the needle than to damage it and have the tree stressed out from that. So it can take a little bit of time and that time is rewarded in that the tree remains healthy. So while working on this initial branch, I'm thinking six, eight months into the future, I'm also reviewing the quality of each branch. If this branch looks weak, if there's too many branches coming out of one junction, if there's anything that might cause a problem or slow things down, and I'm, I'm really keeping the ones that'll be the most productive for the next step, which will come in spring when the buds start to swell on the tree. My branch selection is limited to, I'm gonna remove anything that doesn't look healthy, doesn't look vigorous buds. And if I wanna keep that bud, cause there might be little buds hiding under there. One of the main things I'm looking for is if there's more than two branches coming out of a junction, for example, three, four, five, what happens with a pine tree and almost any tree is it creates a kind of traffic jam in the vascular system of the tree and that area begins to fatten and it ruins the look of the branch. A branch should be wider at the base and thinner at the ends. It shouldn't have a big knob at the end where that traffic jam happens. If you limit your branches to two, the traffic jam doesn't exist. If I've got two or three branches popping out from any given location, I will choose two and remove the third one. I really don't want the branches to be this long in the final design. They're this long now because this is where the, the tree is at. My ultimate design is it to be a bit more compact. For that, light has to get in there to develop new buds. So we're just setting it up for six months in advance. While I'm going through this tree, I'm also looking for dead branches or anything that might have clumped up into a, a kind of a mess and neatening it up. While I'm also going through, I'm also trimming off the stubs and anything that might improve the design over time. One thing to note, my wife just took a look at this video as she pointed out, uh, my elbows are really dry and now that I saw that, I'm never not going to see that. So you're welcome. Take a look at this guy's uh, dry elbows. One advantage to wiring the tree in the fall is you get an extra couple of months where the tree can settle into that shape. So if there's a lot of growth in the spring and summer and wire begins to cut in a little too much, you're six months ahead and you're able to remove that wire and you're fine. It's, it's a good time to really just set the tree up for all the fun coming in the spring. So getting this out of the way now is a great idea. One really cool thing about having a tree for 20 years straight, you know it really well. <laughs> you know, and I, I know this tree pretty well now. Whenever you're starting a bonsai tree, whenever you get to know a plant, you really need to spend a little time with it. Sometimes a season or two to learn its habits, to, because each plant is different. Each, each tree that you work on or own will behave differently. So, Having had 20 years experience with this tree, I know its history and I also know how aggressive or how shy it is with regards to growing. So your confidence improves and I don't hear a lot of people talking about that, but that's a real key thing with bonsai is take your time, enjoy the process, don't rush, you know, and I mean, in this case here, clearly 20 years is not rushing but the end result is something that you're really proud of, something that you built by hand yourself. And I intend to do justice to this tree. I've known it for 20 years. So we finished the second branch and we can move on to the other branches around the tree. We've got some branches coming out in the front, some in the back. The best way to develop that three dimensional feel within a bonsai is to develop back branches. So spending a little time analyzing which branches to keep and to do that is something that I'm doing right here. 
If you like what we're doing over here, go on over to Amazon and check out our book, Bonsai Progress. It's a wonderful little tracker, fits in your pocket or your toolbox. You can keep track of up to 27 different trees, 70 lines with dates. It makes for a great gift, probably the least expensive thing you'll find in the world of bonsai. Uh, so go on over there and check it out. And also, if you like what you're seeing, like and subscribe. Now back to the fun. One of the main goals of pruning these branches has to do with forming and building ramification and reducing the size of the needles. If we take a look at the chart here, in year one, we turn one branch into two, our needles would be a certain size. In the following year, compounding and adding what we did the previous year, once again, adding more branches to the ramification, the tree is competing for more resources, so the needles get a little bit smaller. By year three, after two years of building ramification, we now have a tree that has a lot of branches competing for a lot of resources and the needles will reduce as a result of that in an attempt to maintain balance or homeostasis. This is a process that we can do over and over and over again with a bonsai tree. After three years of doing this, keep an eye on your tree, make sure that it's not struggling. If it appears to be struggling in the following year, don't pinch any buds or prune off any branches. You can rebuild the tree, but we want to maintain the tree's health. So we just leave it alone for a year or two and make sure that it is healthy and strong and vigorous. And then we can proceed again. Bonsai is not a finished piece. It is a continuing cycle that five years on, five years off. Take your time and enjoy the process with the tree. You need to keep in mind that if the tree begins to appear unhealthy because it's competing for too many resources, you may need to rest that tree for a year or two. And that means not being as aggressive with the pruning and the shaping. Okay, so we spent some time adjusting our branches, our main branches, our back branches, our secondary branches, and we're about to move on to uh, an important part of the tree, the top of the tree, the apex. The apex from this perspective, what am I trying to convey? What abstract notion am I trying to convey with this tree? If I want the tree to look very old, the apex would be broader and more rounded. If I were trying to present a tree that's a bit younger, it might be a bit more pointy. So these are things to consider when building it. Another approach I take to building the apex is I think of it as a small tree on top of the big tree. So you've got your basic bonsai tree here. You've got a main branch, you've got secondary branches and a back branch. Your apex should have those as well, at least as a starting point. So if you don't know where to begin, there's a great place to begin. This tree has that sacrifice branch as well, so I want to make sure that I give that plenty of room to do what it needs to do before I remove it. The branches that I'm organizing up here for the apex may not be the complete thought of the apex. I'm currently setting this tree up for winter, and when spring comes, we may see some new buds, and we may see some different developments that we can take this apex further. But the key thing in this action here is to spread the branches out and make sure that the branches that you want to keep and develop are getting sun so that the buds can form. My approach to this tree has been kind of, I guess from a perspective of a bucket list. Uh, one doesn't need to start a tree from seed. One doesn't need to do all of the things I've done over 20 years. But in my mind, much like someone who say would like to paint a self-portrait or run a marathon, this is something that I feel I've accomplished in my life. I've grown a Japanese black pine bonsai from seed successfully, and this is one of the ways a person can incorporate bonsai into their lives as they get more familiar with the craft, with the hobby, with the art form. One could decide on a few challenges you might want to place before yourself and then attempt to accomplish them. We're drawing to a close on all of the activity this tree is going to get before winter settles in and uh, essentially just kind of cleaning up what work I've done, um, making sure that I haven't compressed any needles, pulling off anything that might be pressed under wire that I may have missed, just making sure that the tree is in as good a shape as it can be in for the next few winter months and be ready for spring.
So this tree is going to sit out on the shelf and wait for spring. And I think we'll return to this tree in the future. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you soon.